Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode. Well this will be less of a going picking episode and more of a coming home with the stuff I picked episode. As you can see behind me, I am loaded to the roof. <laughs> I'm actually loaded to the roof with stuff. I've been out all day since first thing this morning. I've gone to three different houses now and I've bought estate boxes from each one of them. Um, and in some cases I haven't even seen what's in them. So the plan is for this episode, we're gonna go through and do sort of a mystery estate unboxing episode, which would be fun for me because I like to know what I bought. Um, I bought these trunks and they're packed full of stuff. I don't know, we're gonna see. So I'm gonna get home, we're gonna unpack some boxes and see exactly what I've already purchased because it's gonna be even a surprise for myself. Okay, I've arrived at the store. I'm gonna show you just how bad the situation is <laughs> in the back. I was gonna offload this stuff at home and kind of do the video there, but then I thought, why unload it twice when I've gotta to come to the store anyhow? I have definitely been busy and my car can barely hold anything else. It is packed solid. Don't worry, there's not whiskey. <laughs> but it is a whiskey box full of who knows what. I have to offload all this stuff inside the store and we'll go through and see exactly what I bought. Again, I did not have a chance to go through these bins when I was at the estate. Um, we're going to do that here at the store today. So uh, I better go get a cart and we'll start hauling the stuff inside the old shop. Everything is offloaded and in the store, there's rows of boxes, stuff piled up there. And of course, these two trunks, which are completely full of who knows what. Uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the boxes that are out first and we'll start to see what's in here. This will be nice and easy. We'll go box by box and then um, I'll get to the mystery trunks around the corner and see what's in there. All right, box number one, it's the easiest to reach. Let's see what we've got. Okay. Ocarina Broadcaster, complete with playing instructions. It's a funny little instrument, easier blowing, practically unbreakable, perfected in tuning, 100% sanitary. And is it inside? Yeah, it is. It's kind of like a uh, Bakelite. Don't exactly know how a person plays this thing. I'm sure that there's probably instructions somewhere. As your mouth goes there. It looks sort of like an odd little flute or harmonica kind of deal. Well, it did say it was 100% sanitary, so... <laughs> I think I need some practice on this. Anyway... Uh, it's nice that it has the original box. Uh, I'm going to keep digging. Maybe there's more instruments in there. Let's go see. I'm put that down. There is another instrument. Hang on. A little wedged in here. There is a tiny little piano. Uh oh. Missing a leg. Not much of a piano if the leg is missing. Let's see, is it in the box somewhere? Oh, look, there's a stereoscope. Oh, look, here it is. Found it. Looks like it's been repaired many times in the past. See if we can get that back on there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use a little bit of glue on that, but. Kind of a cute little thing. And I like the uh, elephant branding on the top there. 
I don't know if it uh, can be tuned or not. But some of those are a little out of whack. Kind of a fun little thing though, nice little, that's literally a baby grand right there. <laughs> okay, let's go back in. See what else is going on. What's this? Oh, music is fun. The Gretsch Ocarina, Ocarina. Anyway, looks like a bunch of guys in the military playing it. That that'd be an odd sight. <laughs> in the back, what are you guys doing over there? Pile. <laughs> uh, anyone, everyone can play with the army method. Okay. Well, that's kind of different, isn't it? What is this? Astra. British made toys. Made in London. Anti-tank gun. Yep, that's what's in there. With a... Looks like they were doing target practice on a little bird. There it is there. It's got the instructions bat on it too. So this would actually fire a little projectile. It's nice that it's so complete with the box. Nice little sort of wartime piece. Always nice to find the boxes for things like that. It improves the value. Now here's something I, I have had in many times before. It should have a little handle on the bottom, which looks like it's missing. But um, this of course is stereoscope. This predates the Viewmaster. Similar kind of idea, though. It would make your pictures sort of come alive. The two viewing lenses. And it would display the image twice. Very similar concept to a Viewmaster. And are there any reels for it? Yes. Yes, there are. I shouldn't say reels. Pictures. Oh, and these are battle scenes, too. Cape Garrison Artillery, making it hot for the Boers. That's the Boer War. My uh, great-grandpa was in the Boer War. That's interesting. Military uh, military pictures are always a little bit more desirable. Looks like somebody had plowed up the train tracks. I wonder if there's any other military. Engineers building a temporary railway bridge that was destroyed... By the Boers, yeah, okay. These are all Boer War era, so around 1900 or before. Street scenes. Broadway, New York. I guarantee that tiny little building at the end there isn't there anymore. Early, early pictures of New York City. Marines on the HMS, was it the HMS Noble? Naya. HMS N I O B E Niobe. Hmm. I would wonder if these ended up as a shipwreck. There's soldiers being tended to. Military. Yeah, these are really neat because they're all sort of military Boer War related. Well, that's a cool find. Let's see what else is in here. I see a upside down cat oh i see you pull the string on it hey, let me let me get this sorted out here you pull the string tight i guess both of them Let's see if i can get my finger on the other ring here it's kind of like a little marionette i believe that if you pull these strings tight like that there you go <laughs> and you can kind of move the strings around so you can sleep and then wake up kind of look around a little bit it's kind of a fun little old thing. This is the sort of thing that you would have had uh, probably in your bag at school, you know, showing your friends your new toy that you got in. I wonder if things like this would sell today, if the kids nowadays would think that that's fun or interesting. Anyway, this poor little head's kind of twisted around, but other than that, it's in pretty good shape. I'm gonna give this head a twist. Oh, oh. There we go. Somehow his face got all turned upside down. That's a little better. That's a happier cat. What? <laughs> There's also a little Scotty dog in here. I don't see a little button in the ear to see whether it's stiff or not. It is um, heavier fill like Excelsior fill. I don't know what the brand of this would be. Oh wait, there's a brand name on the bottom. 
there's a brand on the bottom and it is let's see if we can see what it is something book rag book england rag book company what else to see Olin's, hmm, the tag's a little bit stuck down inside there, but it, it does still have its original tag. And it even has a bow, and it looks like if you wanted to take him for a walk, you've got a little leash, so you could take your little Scotty dog for a walk. <laughs> oh, that's just a cute little thing, isn't it? And we've got some pottery. Nice, that looks like Moorcraft, but it's not. It's Scott, or Set, S-C-E-T, S-E-O-T-T -T maybe. It looks like it's marked Fredericton, Fredericton, New Brunswick on it. And of course, as we all know, pottery can hold some good value, especially one that's done so nicely. That's a really beautiful glaze they put on there. What is this? feels like crystal and maybe pewter that has got to go back a ways this pitcher I would say that's 1800s for sure around that range that's a good solid heavy I think that's crystal or leaded glass that's a that's a really good solid piece it probably would have had a lid at some point too I don't know if the lid's going to be in here or not is this the lid Let's see if that's the lid. Um, oh no, that's a crystal bell. You can hear that ring. That's just a nice little sort of dainty crystal bell. Put that down. There's a vase. Queen Nefertiti on it. Of course, Egyptian stuff is always fairly popular, even if it's obviously that's not from the era, but. People like the uh, it, Egyptian sort of collectibles. Good heavy silver, it might be electroplated, but that is a heavy candlestick. And there's two of them in here. You have these on your table, they're not going anywhere. This thing weighs a ton. It'd be nice if that ends up being solid silver, that'd be some Crazy weight in silver. What else? A little Snoopy. Looks like he can go on his legs or he can stand up either way. <laughs> and look, he's got his flight goggles and his little hat. That's got a date from the 1960s, I would think, when Snoopy was kind of first coming around. That's your Snoopy versus the Red Baron is what that is. Just need a little airplane for him to fly around and maybe I could... Too bad that plane wasn't bigger. I could just put him up in my airplane there, peeking over the edge. This looks like a pipe. Made it in India. Maybe not all that old, but decorative. A little ashtray from Denmark. A little figural ashtray. Getting kind of near the bottom here. Let's see. Somewhat more ornate lamp. The wick has fallen down inside. I might be able to get that wick up. I'll see if I can re-thread it where it's supposed to go. And I think if I'm not mistaken. Oh, that's got a chunk missing out of it. But there's a good one right there. So it even has shade for it too. I'm going to see if I can get that uh, wick pulled up back through there. I'm starting to see why nobody fixed it. This piece is really stuck on there. It's meant to just pull off. It has a, a seal on it that's basically cemented itself in place. I'm going to leave it for now because I don't want to do any damage to it until I have proper tools to work on it. I do want to go through the rest of these boxes however. I'm just about at the tail end. Sadly this other uh, lampshade here is broken so that's no good. Let's see what else is in here. Have to be careful because there's broken glass in there. 
Train whistle, Boy Scout whistle. <whistles> Still gives a toot. We got the whistle. We got the old harmonica here. And that is an old Honer harmonica. It's much bigger than your average harmonica too. It's quite large. And this little box here, what's in the box? It is a coin set. And I know this set. This is the 1960 Canadian set. It was very popular at that time because the uh, coins in it all have uh, animals on them. Unfortunately, they come a little bit loose, but there's a howling wolf. Um, there's, let's see, what, what's on the dollar? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, loon. We ended up getting the loony, but look, we had birds on our dollar coins even back when. Um, the box has come a little loose here, so I'm going to have to try and get this all pieced back together. But that's a nice little set. I think I can make that look a little nicer. There, I think that's about how it's supposed to look. Back inside is little holders, and it gives you a description. The $1 is the Canada Goose, the Wolf, the Wildcat, the Mackerel, the Hare, and the Dove on the one cent piece. I'll box that back up. Oh yeah, look. It's in its official little box too. Neat. All right, time to move on to box number two. Right off the top. Big Ben alarm clock. Dates to probably the 19, early 1960s, maybe late 50s. It's got that kind of mid-century modern look. West Clocks was not the most expensive brand name, but when you find their pocket watches or clocks, they always seem to work, no matter what kind of condition they're in. It's a nice little, there we go. Antique, or at least quite vintage tambourine. See some jewelry boxes. I'll get to those in a sec. Northwest Territory license plate, and this is a sample plate. Government of the Northwest Territory. So this would be the one that um, would have sat in the registry office if you decided that you wanted uh, to get this particular plate. They'd have it on display, and then you pick out your actual plate. So this is sort of a, a demo model. Neat. Let's see what else is in here. Nice little enameled box, or a little bit of inlay going on. And not a whole lot of jewelry in here, because that's the cover for the music box portion. Let's see. Uh, somebody's tooth. <laughs> well, somebody's replacement teeth are in here. Okay, that's this is just novelty. That's like a little, I don't know what that is, like a keychain or something. But that actually looks like it's meant to go in somebody's mouth. Ugh. Little pocket watch. Definitely going to have to go wash my hands after this. An eagle. Oh, no, it's a moose. Yeah, it's a moose. Looks like a happy moose. Some other little uh, bits and pieces. Might be some silver in here. I'll set these things aside to, uh, to look at. I'll put them on a tray. Maybe not the teeth but I'll put the other stuff on a tray and uh, we'll see what we have for jewelry. Another matching jewelry box. looks like it was probably purchased at the same time. And this is full of rings. Completely full of rings. That looks like it's silver. Silver and turquoise. Is there anything under here? Well, that's a, another little music box. I wonder if these still work if I wind them up. Well, it's wound up, but it's not working. That's okay. You could easily fix it up and find out what song we played after, but uh, we'll get the rings out of it though. At least we're finding a little bit of jewelry. Now this little thing, I guarantee will be one of the first things that sells. Somebody's gonna write me and say, do you still have that little, you know, dental implant keychain? This weird stuff sells folks. Don't ask me why, but it always does. Let's see. More jewelry. I'm just collecting it sort of in this box right now. I guess I come across some others. Another clock. Let's 
seems to be working. Set that down. There's a big brass container. What's inside? Nice. It's a nice box either way. Whatever is inside of it. Hopefully it's not an urn. I doubt it. It is jewelry. Oh, hang on. Better than, okay, you guys, maybe you'd get excited about finding jewelry like this. I'm excited about this. That's a 1938 National Parks Pass. It's in really, really good shape too. Made by Winnipeg Brass. That's where you would uh, attach it to the grill of your car. And if you wanted to go through the parks back in the 30s and up to World War II, this is the sort of thing you'd have. That's a good piece. That's a good score. I'm actually quite happy about that. I'm going to set that right there. What else is in here? Maybe there's a few other little treasures. Little butterfly earrings. Uh, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring all the uh, all the jewelry home and Melissa can have a look through and then we'll sort and see, see what we got. The interesting little piece of wood. Not sure what that's all about. Keepsakes. More rings. Okay. Okay. Pretty big bucket of jewelry right there. Well, all this is gonna go in the uh, in the bin to bring home, and I'll sort this stuff at home later. It's gonna take a couple eyes to look at it and see if there's is there silver, is there not? Like some of these things look like they could be silver. Right, and then find the matching pairs and all the rest. That's a good little assortment of jewelry right there, though. What else is in the box? Lots of beadwork. Ooh, sounded like the jewelry box over there was starting to kick in a little bit. Let's see. Ribbons. Don't know what's at the bottom here. And a little watch. tools. Okay. I don't feel like I'm going to have to dump this out to figure out what's in the bottom. A toothbrush. This is like a catch-all. Oh, look at all these pins. Look at all these pins. Holy cow. Ducks Unlimited, Hard Rock Cafe. This is just all pins. Well, there are pin collectors out there. Maybe some of you watching home. Well, those look like earrings. And some fancier, some antique pins. That whole thing is all nothing but pins. The whole thing. Hmm. Well, it's a little bit tangled, but it's a little bit cool. Okay, I'm going to sort through the rest of this and see what treasures were inside. I'm going to try and get this dumped out and figure out exactly what I have here. Well, there was some other jewelry at the bottom of the box and uh, I put it in here. I'll bring that home to sort through later on. I'm going to go through some of these other bins and buckets. This guy right here is a big like a garden scale sort of train set. This is, you know, the type people might put around their tree. Pretty big tree, I guess I'd have to have for that. So it's not a super duper expensive set, but it's sort of a nice decoration either way. Let's see if all, all that's in here is the train set, if there's anything else. There's something wrapped up in here. Feather art. So those are feathers that are painted with, looks like blue jays on them. Clothing was used to wrap it up. Let's see. Oh, look, there's a there's a clock or a photo album or something in here. I think what we have here are uh, beading supplies. So all sorts of different colored beads. That's a little beading kit. And I, I think this was a jewelry box 
that's been, uh, that are just storing their beading supplies in it. It's kind of cool. There's also sort of a little, looks like a hot plate or something in here. What is this? Oh, cheese board. Limited edition, one of 5,000. It's the Royal Wedding Cheese Board to commemorate the marriage of the Prince of Wales and Lady Diana Spencer, 1981. Well, I didn't even know they made a cheese board for that event. <laughs> hmm. Somewhere there's a cheesy joke. Well, the next item, I know what this is. It's a little bit broken looking. Are the pieces in here to fix it? Possibly, maybe. Okay. What this is, it's a uh, it's a butter keeper. It, you'd have this on your fancy sort of Victorian table, and your butter would sit in there. And uh, these little pieces here would actually fold up. They're the meant to go up on either side to keep your butter safe and protected. But one of the sides has come loose. It's a nice design, and uh, likely silver as well. This would date to probably the late 1800s. And your little butter knife would go right there on the rest. But uh, it looks like it needs a little bit of work. I did get this tin dollhouse on top of all the other stuff that I picked up. There's no furniture for it, but it's in really good shape. I'm going to go put this away now just so it's not taking up any more room. Of course, I had to get a sign for good measure. This is from uh, KTM Motorcycles. It's an old uh, sales and service sign. Always somebody looking for this stuff. It's a little bit dirty, but I bet this will clean up really nicely. After a quick wash, looking pretty good. I wanted to show you guys this. Really neat piece. Canadian Government Railways Intercolonial Railway, Prince Edward Island Railway. Prince Edward Island's not very big. This would not have been a very big railway, but this would have been in one of the stations, and it was all the safety precautions and, you know, things that you have to uh, do. Look carefully before you step on and off a car, use the hand railings. This would date probably back to the, the teens or 20s, likely in its original frame. You can see where it was mounted firmly onto a wall. What a great piece of railroad history. And for somebody who's from Prince Edward Island, pretty rare piece of their railway past. Thought that was super neat. It's even got the original board back on it. Sometimes you wonder what's behind here because uh, sometimes there's other old signs and things that they had before. Maybe at one point I'll get motivated and I'll see if there's anything hidden behind all this. But either way, that's neat just as it is. This poor old clock is a little worse for wear right now. This is what they call a gingerbread clock because of the design on the back. They, they, it has that uh, moniker attached to it. He said he didn't thought, think it worked, but it's not gonna work with the pendulum knocking about like that. This is gonna need some adjusting, which I might be able to do. I'll see if I can make something happen here. We'll get the pendulum on and see if I can get it to go. Now, a couple things were wrong. The, the pendulum movement was actually bent and pushed against the chime. Uh, they did not have the right size of clock key, but look, I happen to keep a big bin of clock keys around just in case I come across a clock like this that needs one. I'm gonna see if I can find the right size and wind it up, and with any luck, this thing will go again. Okay, we got the right one. Gonna give a bit of a wind. Why are there two places to wind? One is for your chime and one is for your clock. That's why there's two winding spots on a clock like this. So we'll get this all wound up and then we'll give it a try. Okay, we'll see if we can start to, the pendulum going. Don't know if it's gonna keep ticking. Sounds like it's kind of going. I'm gonna move the hands, see if the chimes do anything. Oh, I see. It's a little out of adjustment. But it's trying. Just about got it. Let's see if I can adjust the chime just a little bit. Just barely want it touching 
Right around there. Let's give that a try. Oh, well, that's better. Still a little bit of a thud, but... Well, it's not perfect, but it's almost there. Okay, enough messing about with clocks. Time to see what we've got. Okay, this is marked silverware. And this to me looks like a silver tray. I'm probably going to uh, open this up in a second. I wanna see what's in this bin. Other than dust and debris. Let's see here. It is, it looks like plates and dishes. It is teacups. Well, that's all right. I do sell teacups. We, we stock them, we keep them around because there's always somebody buying a teacup. We usually sell a cup and saucer for about seven bucks. Oh yeah, a little variety of teacups and things. I can definitely use those. Looks like some teapots down at the bottom there too. Let's see if I can get to them. Possibly a little bit broken. That's had some repairs, quite a few repairs. I'll have to sort out what's sellable and what's not as I go through. Some, some of this is definitely broken. Uh, but even if there's a handful of teacups in there I can resell, that'll be good. Well, this tray is quite lovely. Now, if this was solid silver, you'd have tremendous value. Fortunately, 90% of these, uh-huh. EP copper, primrose plate. So that's electroplated copper. So it's copper with silver plating, which means that when I find the uh, set, there's probably gonna be like a teapot or some cups and things that go along with it. That's all gonna be electroplated too. Either way, um, it's still a nice shiny set and very well kept. So I'm sure I'll be able to find a buyer for it. The next box marked silverware is all packed up individually. So I'm gonna take the time and unpack all this and uh, lay it out here. So far we've got this Nice little bowl. And some of these are hallmarked, may, may actual, actually be silver. Uh, nice little blue glass inset. Maybe that's like a little salt dish. Clearly I haven't been to enough fine dining events where I can know, well I know that's a silver napkin ring. And I would say that that's gonna be likely solid silver. You can see how it's kind of soft. Precious metals are sometimes a little bit softer than most, so. Okay, I'm gonna get this all laid out and see what we've got in the box here. As suspected, I have pretty well the whole silver service set for a, a Downton Abbey-like dinner. The challenge is, I get people to bring this sort of stuff in all the time, and there's very little value in it because the upkeep to actually use is so very high. You need a team of maids and butlers almost just to polish this stuff and keep it so it's usable. Um, what people do now is they look for the solid silver because it has silver weight, which is a real shame. Not that you'd want to scrap it, but, you know, it has value as a commodity, but as a practical, usable thing. Fancy dishes, fancy silverware. Sadly, it's not the family heirloom it once was. Okay, I've gone through most of the boxes that were all over here. I still have these trunks, though. The first thing I'm going to do is have a peek inside the old briefcase here. And we've got a free pen. Is there anything tucked in behind? No, there is not. American Folk Guitar by Alan Lomax and Peg Peggy Seeger. He looks like he's really jamming out. Let's see, Traveler Stamp Album. Oh, this looks like a whole pile of stamps in here. Oh, and look, a brochure for a 75 Ford Pinto, our basic little economy car. Yep, not a bad looking little thing, actually. The lines are pretty clean on it. That's kind of neat, sales brochure for the Pinto. And what do we have for stamps? Well, looks like it's, there's some in here. That might take a little uh, a little doing to go through and see 
if there's uh, any valuable stamps inside, but this whole, basically this whole thing looks like it's full of stamps other than, this should be, yeah, stickers 1970, 71. Looks like it took them a while to get the whole set. Get those from the uh, gas station. SO's here in town. SO, the letter S and the letter O stand for standard oil, and they just kind of spelt it out. Um, still around. I don't know if it's very popular down in the United States, but in Canada, they're all over the place. It's one of our more common gas stations. I'll set the stamps behind the counter here to look at when I'm back in tomorrow. Let's see. Little tub of stuff. I'll bring this up. I'm running out of counter space. Problem is, you know, you sort through all this and then you don't have anywhere to put anything. Just when you think you're through with model kits, you end up more. Really like the art on this box, though. That kit would probably go back to about the 1960s or so. There is a little bag. I don't know what this brown goo is all over this. Be careful not to touch that. There's a bag of little lead figures, cows and other things. Oh, the same brown goo on the bottom. I think it was the little rubber feet have disintegrated off of this. But that's cool. It's a little desk pen set with an airplane on the back. It's pretty neat. I'm gonna be careful where I put that though because I don't wanna get that goo all over the place. This looks like a nice older perfume bottle. Something like you'd find almost in Italy, blown glass, with a little stopper in it. Beautifully done. That is an older piece and it is handmade. There's no markings on the, on the base or anything, but that is a nicely made piece. Let's set that down. Okay, what else? Little toy cars, that looks like a Meccano, yeah little meant to go with the train sets at the time little red wagon looks like a radio knob always missing those let's see maybe a dog chew toy or a baby toy these little cars are kind of cool they're plastic but the detail is pretty good made in italy cooper climax so uh in gap Italian made little toy cars, and there's a few of them in here. You know, even though they're plastic, they're pretty fun to look at. And I always have people who are buying old cars. What's this? Ferrari Sport. Even has a little driver in there. I guess they all do. Oh, there's a little service bell. I guess I can leave that on the counter in case I disappear off in the back. That might drive me crazy. Uh, let's see, little sort of tea sets, some party favor, little trumpets. Oh, there's another car in here. Okay, well, a little variety of stuff. Okay, it's got some weight to it. Let's see what's inside of trunk number one. More stuff. thumbtack. What's in the old Woodward's bag? Why, a nice little 1950s RCA radio in sort of this mauvey pink color nonetheless. That's cool. Wooden box. Dovetail corners. Looks fairly industrial. It's got some latches on it. What's inside? Oh, it's a uh, it's a transit. It's a level. It's a surveyor's level, is what that is. And it's in its original box. Transit certification, handy two inch transit. Probably from the forties or so, I would say. A nice little wooden box, maybe fifties. That's a pretty cool find. I think I actually have the stand for this thing in the back. I might have extra uh, transit stand. They have a special little wooden tripod that people use. 
let's see, I did have, yeah, I've converted it into a, a lamp. I put this old Cadillac light on top of this transit, but that's what that would have sat on top of, would have been those sort of uh, survey tripod sticks right there. Hmm, well, I knew I had some, oh, there's, there's a little, uh, a smaller one. Hmm, I'll have to see if I can find some more sticks somewhere and put it all back together. This little bin looks kind of fun. I can see there's a Viewmaster, and this would have been the box for the Viewmaster, but they've completely filled it up with all the slides. Going way back, I'm sure. Wildflowers, Rocky Mountain, yeah, this is completely packed full of slides. That's a good little set, right there. It's the second one I found in so many days. What are these books? Coming of Arthur, Alfred Tennyson. Little Luxart Library. So it's a tiny little uh, book set. Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. Bad Ballads by Gilbert. Will of the Mill by Stevenson. Kind of a nice little uh, miniature book set. I wonder if they're all there. Look to be. Oh, this is an old children's set of plates and dishes. It's actually a proper little set. That's a nice little set in there. Yeah, okay. Got a little set of kids' dishes and some books. What's under layer number two? Records. Willie Nelson and Roger Miller. Some maps and pictures. This is the, uh, that's off an old racing motorcycle. That's off like an old motocross bike or something. Go right on the front. Kind of neat. Where the rest of the bike is. Boy, there's just a couple of wooden statues at the bottom here, too. Carved wooden statues and an old violin. Nice leather case, too. Let's see what kind of shape it's in. Sometimes these are pretty trashed. Oh, it's not bad. Well, a few of the strings are still in tune. can't see a maker's name right now. Oh, there might be a maker's name in there. I'll see if I can get the light on and look inside. Let's see. Can we focus? It's hard to read. Let's see if I can look at it without the camera. Well, this might some ha have some uh, actual age to it. What it says inside is it says repaired by Walter and then his last name. And it looks like the date of 1850 that it was repaired. So if this thing was repaired in 1815, I'm guessing it's been repaired since, obviously, because there's some newer bits on it here. How old is this violin? If it had to get fixed in the 1800s. It's in really good shape, though, overall. It's probably still a good player. Well, that is trunk number one done. I have to say, these trunks are pretty darn spectacular, even on their own. That is some beautiful tin work. I mean, these are very nice trunks. Though so I'm happy even just with the trunks. Uh, let alone the stuff that's coming out of them. Yeah, I'm gonna go put this one in the back and get out of the way so we can dig inside the next. Ba -ba -bum. Chest number two. Oh, yeah. Somebody's definitely relined this back in the 60s or 70s. That's not authentic to the 1800s liner that would have been in here, but at least it kept it clean. <laughs> Teacher's bell. Somebody has... Uh, polish the outside greatly but that is an antique bell that is an old schoolhouse bell more perfume bottles or little uh powder dishes stuff that would have sat on a lady's nightstand it all matches too that blue sort of cut glass matches that other piece i had yeah i better put these somewhere safe i'm surprised they made the trip actually 
just set them out of the bin for now while I dig through. Super old book. Somebody has put some, uh, or the binding is coming loose. Let's see. Handed down to Henry Ames Arden from his parents in 1910. It was handed down in 1910. How old the book is it? I'm going to say 1800s. Reverend Richard Burnham Memorials. 1821. There you go. Printed and published 1821. Hmm. Well, that is an old, old book. Not terrible condition, considering its age. Many of the books back in the 1800s and 1700s were religious context. It's almost hard to find a book that's not something to do with religion. I didn't have much for reading material back then, I guess. But, oh, here's the little, uh, here's the end for the atomizer. It's hard as a rock, though. Have to get a new one, likely. Unless you just want to show it. But that should have a little, uh, like a little hose or something that comes off the end there. I'll keep it in the box right now. Another little kid's enamelware set. Sheriff badge. If I can dig it out. Yep. New sheriff in town. More bells. And more bells. Somebody really likes bells. Little toy. Or a little uh, carved, that might be like a, I don't know if that's a jade or what type of stone that is. With the red mixed in there, red and green stone, but a little carved elephant. That's pretty cute. What else do we have? A little flag. And another sheriff's badge. Well, that's Marshall. We have a sheriff and a marshal. Carson City. It's obviously not a real Carson City Marshall badge. That'd be cool if it was. Like a 1940s or 50s toy version. Tiny little cowboy boots. They're actual leather, too. I wonder if there's a little doll that goes with those or if that was just a little miniature set of cowboy boots. You know, sometimes these can be salesman samples. Maybe not this small, but that's some nice leather work on there. Or they'd carry these around and say, okay, well, we've got them. <laughs> you walk into the store and the guy says, we have these little, we, this is what our boots look like. And the, the guy's like, yeah, but do you have them in larger sizes? But um bum uh, I don't know if that's a salesman sample. I think it's just a little miniature. It's a few miniatures in here, little bells and stuff. Okay, I'm going to dig deeper through this box. Okay, this looks like another, yeah, it's another transit. So somebody must have been an engineer or surveyor that's the second one i've got so far authentic caribou hair tufting sculptures wow so that's all made out of caribou hair polar bear polar bear what's the other one it's kind of neat but it probably would have taken a long time to make those too set those over there That looks like Guns N' Roses. That's a little out of place. Guns N' Roses shirt. Is it a concert shirt? No, it doesn't say it on the back. If it, tour shirts are worth a bit of money. ACDC, back in black. Oh yeah, see, this is a tour shirt. So this basically has all the different names on it. Sometimes they'll give you the, the dates. People do collect concert shirts. So any old concert shirt's gonna have some value this one. Oh, Montreal Canadiens. Not terribly old, I don't think. Old clothing, you'd be surprised that there are some, there is some value in old clothing. Oh, look, there's some games in here. What's this? More jewelry. Some costume pearls. Only one way to tell if pearls are real or not, you gotta rub them on your teeth. It feels gritty. Well, there's other ways, but that's a way to tell. I'll set that aside. More shirts. Oh, here's a good one. 
somebody went to see Iron Maiden at some point and got the Iron Maiden shirt. That kind of stuff does sell. There are lots of people who collect that sort of thing. Who is this? Uh, oh, Neil Young. Neil Young Crazy Horse concert shirt. Well, I'm getting a few shirts out of the deal anyway. A couple of board games. I don't remember this. Go For It by Parker Brothers. The game where you can have it all. In the 80s, what did you want? Okay. It looks kind of like a Ferrari. Like a 308 or 328 or something like that. Uh, apparently, a lady dressed in slight business attire singing. Um, or maybe she works at a department store. Uh, sale on ladies' clothing in aisle 23. I don't think that's what they had in mind, though. <laughs> Uh, you're flying somewhere, you've got a big country estate, and you're playing tennis, or you're just showing this girl that you have you have a tennis racket. Look, I've made it, Sally. I've been able to buy my own tennis racket. And she's like, meh. <laughs> He's like, that's right, I've got a tennis racket. Well, never played Go For It before. A game of excess, courtesy of the 1980s. So here's another 80s game in here. The Duke's a Hazard game. Les Joux. It's a Canadian version. The Duke's a Hazard is French and English. Hit the road to Hazard County with the Duke boys. Race through Duke County on your way to Uncle Jesse's farm and look out for the boss and Roscoe, just like the Dukes do. Yahoo! Well, that'll sell. There's a lot of people who collect Duke's a Hazard stuff. That will find a home, no problem. Oh, a little Star Wars model kit. Without the... What? <laughs> um, it's a Star Wars kit, but there's a Sunbeam Tiger AMT kit inside of it, which is probably a lot older, actually. That's probably a, a much more rare kit to have. Don't Maybe they lost the box, or maybe they built it and transported it, but I'm going to leave this open so I know that that's not what's inside. If I could find the original box for the Sunbeam Tiger kit, that would be pretty cool. That's probably a fairly rare little AMT kit. Deluxe edition of Scrabble with the fancy board. Oh, looks like they've got things figured out. Really all the, the letters I ever get are every, every consonant or without a vowel or every vowel without a consonant. Uh, let's see, what do we have in here? Another Snoopy. I still really like their Snoopies. I think this is a dashboard Snoopy. This might He might have actually come with you on your car. He's not a bobblehead, but this one has a cape. What's in the bag? A little bag of toys of some kind. Oh, there's a Transformer in there. That's cool. That's an old one, too. 1983. A random key. Skeleton key. wonder if it's for this trunk. I doubt it. So I think I saw the key. Oh, well, maybe it's for this trunk. Little tiny robots and stuff. Okay, well. Oh. Not a Hot Wheel. Little bits and bobs and pieces. The Transformer is probably the best thing that came out of that. And it looks like some rugs. Some handmade rugs. I'm going to take this out. Oh, I'm getting quite the pile around the store. I haven't even had a chance to do any kind of cleaning yet. Let's see, what is the rug? Mallard Ducks. It's a Mallard Duck rug. When you go to the east coast of Canada, there's hookers all over the place. Rug hookers, that is. <laughs> I think I made that off-color joke when I was there, and these little old ladies all laughed at it because they were busy making rugs. And I said, come on, honey, let's get out of here. This place is full of old hookers. <laughs> uh, the, the things that you, you know, because that is what you, you are. You're, you're hooking rugs. <laughs> Trust me, folks, they laughed. I didn't get kicked out. <laughs> I'm sure they've heard that joke before. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of uh, handmade rugs in here. And they can be quite expensive too, because it's quite a bit of effort to actually make a rug like that. Okay, 
bin number two is complete. I was also pretty happy because while I was there, I picked up this beautiful old ship's lantern. Um, it would mount flush on a wall, or you could carry it about with you around the ship if you needed a light. Uh, it's in really good shape. It's got the wick and everything. That's about as nice as it comes. Dated, what, 1941? So wartime era. And uh, made of um, brass, so it's uh, resistant to salt water. Really, really nice piece. Last but not least, I've got the stuff I've set on top of the ice cream cooler. There is another violin case, and inside, another violin. Now this one, well, one of the bows looks like the horse hair has had it on there. The, it's kind of stringing out all over the place, but there's two bows. There's some little accessories. Now, this violin, I could see on the inside, it's dated. Mm, if I can get the light to work here, I'll see if I can show you. It is dated 1891. I'm trying to get a uh, maker's name. It's really hard to focus on, on the little paper label in there. But this this violin is uh, equally as old, likely as the other. Has not had any sort of restoration. The other one had been restored. But still, looks like it's all there and intact. And a violin like this be put back in service with very little work. An umbrella. Always handy. This is a... Uh, Store advertisement, Techno Toys, obviously made in Denmark. They made uh, wind-up, mechanical, all sorts of neat stuff. Make a nice little display. I might be able to put it kind of somewhere near here. If I got some Techno Toys, that would help <laughs> with the presentation. But it's a cool old sign, old store display sign. A pair of quite old catgut uh, snowshoes. These would date back to about the 1920s or so. And a box full of records. What do we have? Edith Piaf, George Harrison. Ooh, some mold happening on that. That's not good. And a whole pile of 45s. Certain 45s are more valuable than others. Um, my dad was an expert at going through this stuff to figure out which were the good ones. I am not so much. I kind of know like old rockabilly, you know, girl groups like the... Uh, Shangri Laws and that are a little bit more collectible. Um, parakeet training record. <laughs> Your parakeet can teach itself. I wonder what sort of things are on the parakeet training record. <laughs> well, this is such a big pile of 45. I'm going to really have to spend some time while I'm here at work to go through it all because I can't uh, get it all separated out now. I've got to get myself back home before long. And I still have this big mess of stuff piled all around the shop. It needs to be dealt with before I open. Digging a little deeper through this bin of kids' dishes, there's a nice little porcelain Mountie on his horse, on his faithful steed. And I noticed that the kids' dishes at the bottom were in fact a really old Mickey Mouse set. If we look at the bottom, it says made in occupied Japan. So that'd be about 1946. Copyright Walt Disney Productions, which is nice because that means it was an official item issued by Disney. So there's a whole set of Mickey and Minnie Mouse kids' dishes in here. That was a nice little find. Well, that's it for now. I'm going to head back home, take the jewelry with me to sort through. Hopefully there's some good finds in there. But my favorite find were the Parks Passes. Of all the stuff that I got today, the Parks Passes were probably about my favorite thing that was uh, mixed in with all this stuff. Uh, it goes to show you got to dig through bins and boxes to find the odd little gem. For now, though, I'm heading back to home, uh, but I still have a bunch of cleaning to do, and I guess I'll deal with all this mess when I come in tomorrow morning. Ah, uh, it never ends. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you all soon, and uh, don't forget to subscribe if you hadn't already for more episodes. Bye for now.